Thank you for joining me for this introduction to Scrum. Let's begin by briefly describing what Scrum is, why it was created, and how it is used. Scrum is commonly used on software development projects, but it can be used to execute projects of any type. Scrum is categorized as an agile approach. In this context, agile indicates that a project is defined and implemented iteratively through collaboration among team members and stakeholders. Change in the plan is frequent, is welcome, and value delivery is the focus. Scrum is based on a concept called empiricism, which basically asserts that knowledge is gained by observation and experience. Scrum is a lightweight framework, not a predictive engineering process. It allows teams to determine the details of how they operate within the guidelines of the framework. Before agile approaches became popular, the prevailing methodology was known as waterfall. This was a phased approach with control gates determining when a project moves from one phase to another. These projects were often plagued with large schedule slips, budget overruns, quality challenges, and morale issues. The Agile response to solving these issues set the stage for the development of the Scrum framework. Scrum is iterative and incremental, and the plan is modified as needed based on experience. The team plans work in short iterations with a clearly defined goal. As the team delivers potentially shippable value at the end of each increment, the plan is modified as needed based on experience. Waterfall is a predictive process, which means that it can only be effectively applied when there is very little uncertainty expected to be encountered as the project is executed. The requirements need to be well understood, as well as the method of achieving them, which must be highly controlled and with minimal variability. Success of a predictive approach depends on the level to which the plan can be adhered to. The point here is that it must be possible to completely define the requirements before implementing the design, fully implement the design before implementing the software, and fully test the software with minimal discoveries that impact any of the prior phases. In contrast to the predictive waterfall approach, Scrum employs an empirical approach that is more effective in cases where there is more uncertainty. Scrum leverages knowledge gained from observations and experience, modifying the plan as needed. The principles of the Scrum framework are defined in three pillars that support the empirical approach. These pillars are transparency, inspection, and adaptation. Transparency means that it is a priority to make all aspects of the project highly visible to everyone involved which facilitates the observation component of the empirical approach. As a result, everyone shares a common understanding and surprises are minimized. Inspection means that artifacts are frequently reviewed. Inspection occurs throughout the iteration at multiple levels, enhancing quality and encouraging frequent feedback from stakeholders. Inspection adds experience, which provides a basis for increasing knowledge and removing uncertainty. This is a critical component in the empirical approach. Adaptation means that changes are welcome. In contrast to the waterfall approach where adherence to the unchanging plan is paramount, the plan changes frequently based on experience each iteration. Detailed plans for each iteration are built just in time in order to maximize and leverage knowledge gain during the previous iteration. Scrum also adds a set of values which are equally important. The team shares the responsibility of achieving the goal that they commit to each sprint. In order to maximize the likelihood of meeting their shared commitment, they must be open with each other and be able to work with minimal distractions. Teams must be protected from outside interference during the sprint so they can focus on meeting the sprint goal. The impact of distractions significantly increases risk because they reduce time spent working toward the sprint goal as well as create context switching which dramatically reduces efficiency. And finally, respect and courage emphasize the importance of basic human dignity and strong character in the functioning and success of a healthy team. The Scrum Framework defines a set of roles, artifacts, and events. 
The roles consist of the Scrum Master, the Product Owner, and the Developers, which make up what is called the Scrum Team. There are three artifacts defined by the Scrum Framework. These are the Increment, the Product Backlog, and the Sprint Backlog. The events involved are the Sprint, which is a container for all of the other events, Sprint Planning, the Daily Scrum, the Sprint Review, and the Retrospective. From an artifact perspective, the product backlog can be thought of as the single source of requirements defining value to the stakeholders. It is owned and managed by the product owner. It is ordered by priority and represents everything that is known to be needed in the product. Sprint backlog is a subset of the product backlog. It represents the plan for the current sprint owned by the developers. It represents a forecast of what will be delivered at the end of the sprint, defining the work needed to deliver the functionality. The increment can be thought of as the sum of all product backlog items delivered at the end of each sprint. Each increment is additive, contributing to the ultimate fulfillment of the product goal. It is important to recognize that an increment can be delivered at any time during the sprint and multiple increments can be planned within a single sprint. The product goal provides context to the product backlog, describes a future state of the product and serves as a target for the Scrum team to plan against, which represents a long-term objective for the Scrum team. There is only one product goal for the product backlog at any one time. The Scrum Guide is intentionally general about the product goal, with the intent of allowing Scrum teams to structure the goal in a way that most effectively works for their team. For example, one team might work best with product goals that are very specific and align with quarterly objectives, while another Scrum team might work best with higher level product goals. The product goal is added to the product backlog. Then, the remaining product backlog items emerge to fulfill it. Similar to the product goal, the sprint goal provides context to the sprint. It is the single objective for the sprint. It is created during the sprint planning event and is committed to by the team. The intent of the sprint goal is to create coherence and focus for the team as they execute the sprint. If scope changes are injected during the sprint, they must not be accepted if they impact the sprint goal. Doneness is a critical component of the Scrum Framework in that the ultimate goal is to frequently deliver value to the customer. In order to represent delivered value, functionality must be completely done. In keeping with the focus on value delivery, the Scrum Framework requires a formal definition of done describing the state of a sprint backlog item when it meets the required quality measures. The definition of done communicates a shared understanding of when a sprint backlog item is complete. A sprint backlog item cannot be presented at the sprint review or included in a release until it meets the definition of done. If there are multiple scrum teams working together on a product, they must mutually define and comply with the same definition of done. Examples of items in a software team's definition of done might include quality items like code reviews, unit testing, static analysis, and integration testing, or development housekeeping items like code documentation, capturing of technical debt, configuration management standards, or management of test data sets. A well-defined definition of done brings transparency into practice. It ensures that everyone has a shared understanding of a done increment, which ensures that the increment results in something that can be used and is available for immediate deployment. This is sometimes referred to as a potentially shippable increment. Done means that the increment is 100% complete. Partially completed backlog items that are accepted prematurely will likely result in technical debt since unaddressed implementation and quality issues will be built upon in subsequent iterations. In order to ensure that high quality value is consistently delivered while minimizing technical debt, product owner must ensure that the definition of done is satisfied before the increment is accepted. As I mentioned previously, the Scrum Framework defines five events, which together represent the increment. Sprint is a container for the other four events. Putting it all together, a sprint begins with sprint planning, with a daily Scrum occurring each day and ending with a sprint review, followed by the sprint retrospective. 
The team pulls items from the top of the backlog into a sprint during sprint planning, which results in a detailed plan for the sprint. The detailed plan is called the sprint backlog. The sprint backlog will be created based on the team's historical velocity, which represents a rate at which they produce value. As the team executes the sprint, they meet daily at the daily scrum in order to discuss what was done the previous day and address blockers that require adjustments to the plan and determine what will be done going forward for the next day. A sprint review is held at the end of the sprint, which allows the product owner to review the results of the increment and accept product backlog items that meet the definition of done. Based on what was learned during the sprint, adjustments to the plan can be applied, setting the stage for the next sprint planning event. Prior to starting the next sprint, the team will conduct a sprint retrospective where they will review how the team is working together and applying the Scrum framework with the intent of continually improving their efficiency and quality. Now let's go into some detail on each of the events. As mentioned previously, the sprint is a container for all of the other events. It is a fixed length of one month or less, and the next sprint starts immediately after the previous sprint ends. The result of the sprint is the creation of a done increment representing value to the stakeholder. Sprint planning is the first event within the sprint. For a one month sprint, sprint planning should be limited to a maximum of eight hours, and for shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. The entire Scrum team is involved with sprint planning, meaning that the Scrum Master, the product owner, and the developers all participate in the event. During sprint planning, a sprint goal is defined, which provides context to the sprint. The sprint goal should describe why the sprint is valuable. Based on the sprint goal, a detailed plan to meet the goal is created by the team. Since the product owner is responsible for maintaining and ordering the product backlog, the content of the sprint backlog will reflect a set of the highest priority product backlog items that the team is able to complete within the sprint time box. The team determines how much of the product backlog they expect to deliver based on their available capacity and past performance. Work identified for implementation during the sprint must be accepted by the team as a commitment based on their definition of done. The team must be satisfied that they know enough about the sprint backlog items in order to deliver a done increment within the sprint time box. Scope can be clarified and renegotiated during the sprint with the product owner as more is learned, but no changes that are made can endanger the sprint goal. Once the sprint planning event is complete, the team begins executing the detailed plan. On a daily basis, the team meets for 15 minutes to assess what has been accomplished discuss any changes to the plan based on what was learned, identify blockers, and make adjustments to the plan as needed. Coming out of the daily scrum, all team members should have a clear understanding of the plan for the next day's work. The scrum Master guides the team in their use of the scrum framework and removes any impediments that the team encounters that stand in the way of meeting the sprint goal. The product owner provides clarification as needed throughout the sprint and the developers create the value delivered at the end of the sprint and hold each other accountable as professionals to the sprint commitment. There is no prescribed format to the daily scrum event, which means that the team determines the best format and techniques to meet their needs. The sprint review is held at the end of the sprint in order to inspect the increment delivered by the scrum team. The event is time boxed at four hours for a one month sprint and for shorter sprints, the event is usually shorter. The Scrum team and the stakeholders attend the sprint review in order to review the functionality produced and consider any changes to the backlog content or priority based on what was learned. The sprint review should not be limited to a demo, but should be a working session where the Scrum team and the stakeholders consider what was accomplished and determine what to do next. The sprint retrospective is the last event of the sprint. It is limited to a maximum of three hours for a one month sprint and is usually less for shorter sprints. The purpose of the retrospective is to plan ways to increase quality and effectiveness. The sprint retrospective is a critical feedback loop which enables adaptation and allows the team to continually improve how it delivers value every sprint. Teams will typically discuss what went poorly during the sprint, what went well, and what they should continue doing. Any facet of how the team works can be discussed, including 
how well they are using the Scrum framework, quality practices, elimination of technical debt, communication, and development practices. Okay, that concludes this presentation, and at this point you should have everything you need to begin setting up the various roles, artifacts, and events involved with the Scrum framework and start using it with your teams. Thank you for listening. <laughs>